What? Has someone come into the living room? Hasn't everyone gathered yet? The maid asked another. Isn't this Raiden Argent? Asked another. One maid told the other that it seemed that the guy was going to propose to the girl today, and therefore they were invited to prepare clothes. The other maid was surprised to hear about the proposal. She said that this boy does not yet know that his father took away all the property from the Count. How can you not know? It has long been known that he uses the Earl's duty as a weapon to harass the young lady, said the first maid. Since the girl was previously a child, it was very polite to see her without a good reason. But she had to marry her cousin, and only now everyone felt sorry for her. The guy asked the girl if she knew why he came to her. He repeated that if she married him, she could forget about her father's debts and live in luxury. But Heather Argent told him no again. The guy was angry and said that at her age, she should think about marriage. Otherwise, she will grow old alone. When the guy asked if she really thought she was still young and beautiful, the girl realized that this was the worst marriage proposal. But she shouldn't quarrel with him. He is the son of her uncle, who stole the property with hatred when his father inherited the title. In front of her was an arrogant and depraved man. Heather told him, Give me some time to think. Marriage is a serious matter no matter how rich you are. But the guy replied that it doesn't matter how much she thinks. After all, in the end, she will still marry him. Heather felt uncomfortable being here and wanted to leave. The girl was born the daughter of a count, and therefore she knew that one day she would get married. She never thought about a grand wedding, and the same about a wedding with an ideal partner. But she must marry someone who is a coward to the strong and a helper to the weak. Heather hated her life. The father was very angry. The brother reassured Heather and promised to go right now and asked to soften the offer. The father asked if there was a way. Cedric told his father that he would try to talk first, but if verbally did not work, he would try another way. Heather asked them to calm down. The girl knew that they would need some time to calm down. Her father and brother are very good people. They will try to fix everything. But in the end, only retribution will return. Of course, she did not want to marry the arrogant and cruel Raiden, but no matter how much she thought she had to agree, she decided that she would not cause trouble for her family and would tell them that it was her wedding and she would take care of it herself. The girl was informed that Mr. Raiden had come for an answer. The girl's father grabbed him by the collar. The guy said it was not hospitable of them. After all, he is the one who will marry his daughter. His father told him to get rid of such thoughts, since he will not give his daughter to such an idiot. Damn it, you talk too much. It must have been difficult for Handel to find a wife because of his debts? Raiden asked Heather's father sarcastically. Then Brother Cedric hit him in the face with his fist and warned that if he insulted anyone from his family again, it would not end with just one fist. Raiden didn't understand how someone could hit him. Heather asked them to stop. After all, if someone is seriously injured, it will have big problems. The maid said that a guest had come to them. The man said that he would like to meet Heather or Greta. The girl said it was her. The man said he was Gilliam Oswell, Duke Eckard's butler. He said that it was initially assumed that the Duke would come in person. But the Duke had to leave on business and was unable to see Heather. The butler gave the girl a message that said, Dear Heather, please marry me. Duke Eckard's butler arrived in a luxuriously dazzling golden carriage. Inside the box that the servant was carrying from the cart was a magnificent necklace with diamonds. This necklace was so rare that if you sold it, you could provide for yourself and your family for the rest of your life. This was also a gift from the Duke to Heather. Duke Eckard was shrouded in a veil of gossip and rumors. Raiden, having heard about the Duke's proposal, called Heather talented because she managed to meet Duke Eckard. The butler Gilliam asked him if he could take responsibility for insulting the lady and the Duke. Raiden replied that he no longer wanted to be here and ran away. Gilliam turned to Heather, saying that she shouldn't give an answer right away. They will remain in the capital and wait for her answer. And he left. Father asked Heather if she had ever met Duke Eckard, but the girl replied that she didn't even know what he looked like. It was not surprising that my father was worried. Duke Eckard was so famous, but no one in the empire knew the truth about him. It is said that his family was the founder of the country and ruled the eastern part of the empire. After the death of the Duke and Duchess, their youngest son inherited the title. The present Duke Eckerd was never a native of the East. A family that does not show its face in society is a good topic for rumors. Duke Eckerd's fame faded, leaving behind only ridiculous rumors. The brother asked Heather why the Duke proposed to her, but she didn't know. Cedric was against this marriage. He heard that the Duke is not a good man. In addition, the East is too closed and eccentric a place for her alone. Heather didn't know if he was a good person. The father said that he was also not sure about marrying a man about whom they knew nothing. Father, brother, have you forgotten that Raiden proposed to me? I don't want to hear people making fun of my family. You need a reason to reject Rylan. 
and he will have no choice but to back down when I accept the Duke's offer. So, I would like to accept the offer, Heather said. Heather's father told her she shouldn't sell herself. Cedric asked her not to do this for their sake. It will take time to pay off the debt, but she should not sacrifice herself. And they would like her to marry someone she really loves. But this was the only way to save her family, and she decided. Her father said that she should think carefully about her decision, but he knew that she would not change her mind. And Heather has already made her choice. A month later, the butler Gilliam arrived again at the mansion of Count Argent. He wanted to discuss the wedding and said that the Duke could not come again due to important matters. Heather replied that everything was fine, because they would just discuss marriage in detail. Gilliam said the Duke would pay all expenses for the wedding, and she would not have to contribute her share. And he will even pay off the Count's debt. The girl said she would not accept this. After all, no one from her family would want her to be sold. Gilliam agreed with her and asked if she had any other questions. Heather asked why the Duke decided to marry her. The butler apologized and said he didn't know that, and he added that if she had no more questions, he would send a servant to help her get ready. As he left, he said, Lady Argent, if the man I saw causes trouble again, tell me. I think I can resolve this issue. Heather replied that everything was fine. She admitted that she accepted the Duke's proposal because she wanted to reject another. Standing near the carriage, the family saw Heather off. Her father told her to take more warm clothes and dress well, since it is cold in the east. And her brother told her not to be afraid and to return home if she didn't like it there or if the duke turned out to be a bad person. The girl told them that everything would be all right and got into the carriage with her maid. The maid was worried that the duke would turn out to be a bad person, but Heather reassured her that these were just rumors and she had nothing to worry about. She promised that everything would be fine. Heather decided that she could protect the people close to her. The crew gradually took her further and further from her family. Soon she left the capital where she was born and went to a place unfamiliar to her. A month and a half later, they arrived in the eastern territory of Duke Eckerd. The weather here was fresh, and the girl remembered her father's words about warm clothes. While the maid was telling her hair, Heather saw through the carriage window how people were greeting someone. They all seemed to be celebrating something. As they exited the carriage, they were greeted by the butler Gilliam. Heather couldn't look at the sunlight. Gilliam said the sun also decided to greet them in the east. The girl asked the butler what strange scenes she had just seen. All the people outside were praising something and were happy. They shouted that the sun had risen. Gilliam replied that it rarely gets so sunny in the east, so sunny days are rare here, which is probably the reason for everyone's happiness. Let me explain it to you better. This is the first time I've seen the sun rise in the east in many years of living here, the butler added. Heather was very surprised. After all, the capital where she lived was so beautiful that she could not even think that sunlight was so precious. When Heather entered the house, she was greeted by all the servants. One maid approached her and offered to take her luggage. The guest wanted to greet the duke, but the maid said that his lordship is not here now, and he is busy with work. Heather felt relieved and was surprised at the feeling. She decided that in any case, she better start getting used to this place, and should find the positive sides of this estate in order to come there in difficult moments. But no matter how hard she tried, she couldn't find the positive aspects in the dying trees and cobwebs in the corners. Everything about this estate needed repair and care. Gilliam invited the girl to have a cup of tea before she entered her chambers. As they drank tea, the butler said that there were things she needed to know to live in the East. The girl didn't understand what he was talking about. First, when going to the city, she must take five escorts with her. The East is unsafe and the crime rate in this region is high. Second, she won't be able to walk around the estate at night. For her own safety, it is better for her to stay in her room. Some parts of the estate have very little security due to low wages. Gilliam reminded the girl that sunny days are rare here, so when the rains become particularly heavy, roads and bridges go underwater. But they have nothing to worry about, since their mansion is on top of a hill and will never be flooded. And he added that if she did not leave the estate, she would definitely be safe. Heather asked what about his lordship. Gilliam replied that the duke was a very busy man and was almost never at the mansion. Once in her room, the girl realized that the duke was not involved in the mansion. But her room was richly furnished and it was warm. Gilliam told her the house was in this condition because bad weather made construction difficult, and the Duke is constantly busy with business. Heather thought it would be better if the withered garden was taken care of in the same way as her room, so she was very tired from the road. The girl fell asleep. When Heather woke up, it was already dark outside. Suddenly she heard someone enter her room. I'm sorry I woke you up, the guy said. Your Grace? asked the girl. Yes, he replied. He seemed to Heather to be a tall, strong man, not like a monster. 
The girl told the Duke that she was pleased to meet him and introduced herself as Heather Argent. She asked his permission to turn on the light, since it was completely dark. But the Duke said that this was impossible. The girl was scared. Is he really as scary as rumors say about him? Heather agreed to talk in the dark. Why did you propose to me? She asked. But he was silent. You don't show your face, you don't answer questions either. What am I supposed to know? Heather asked. The Duke was silent and the girl asked, Will you treat me like a real wife? He answered yes. Then Heather asked what the Duchess's strength was in the East. The guy replied that she would have all the powers after him. Then, Heather said that she wanted to restore the mansion, since it was her future home. The Duke agreed and left. The girl didn't understand why he didn't want to talk to her. But in any case, she was satisfied that her power was second only to the Duke. When morning came, Heather saw that the weather was beautiful again and decided to try and clean up today. She decided to start with her room. The girl noticed a fragment on the floor, and she thought that even her room was poorly cleaned. There were so many places in the mansion that needed renovation. Heather noticed that the maids were avoiding her, but she thought it was worth keeping a good mood because the weather promised to remain good. Besides, she had no reason to worry. But on days like this, bad things always happen. Stop insulting my lady, she heard. That lady who was sold by her relatives? What is valuable about a lady who was sold by her family to the Far East? You must obey us and our rules, the maids told her one by one. Can I ask what's going on here? Heather asked, peeking into their utility room. She was told that this was only between the maids and did not concern her. Heather knew she would be ignored here, but she didn't know it would be this much. The girl said that this was her maid, and they had no right to oppress her people. She remembered her father's words. Heather, you have to be humble in front of the head there, but that doesn't mean you have to endure any attacks. Be polite but firm with everyone. Then, Heather said, I am a future duchess and I have the right to condemn your rudeness. If you are unhappy with me, then you can be honest. I will listen to you. Jenna cried, and Heather comforted her, saying that she had done nothing wrong and she asked me to tell her if something like this happens again in the future. Heather told the maid that she was going to restore the garden, so she needed to meet some people. But the butler called the girl. He suggested moving to the living room and talking there. In the living room, Heather told Gilliam that she had just reproached the maids for insulting her servants. Gilliam said she did the right thing and can continue to blame them. After all, she will soon become the mistress here. The girl thought that there were still good people here. Heather told the butler that she wanted to meet with him to discuss when the wedding ceremony would take place. But suddenly, he replied that there would be no ceremony. Lady, you just need to sign the marriage certificate without a wedding ceremony, Gilliam told her. The girl didn't understand why they hadn't told her anything before. In the Bernia Empire, weddings have special significance. And it doesn't matter whether you are from the nobility, or from the common people, or how poor you are. You must perform the wedding ceremony. Those who get married without a wedding are not perceived as an official couple, but Heather won't have a wedding ceremony. It is true that she accepted the marriage proposal, despite the fact that she has no feelings for the Duke. But she made this hasty decision to cancel Raiden's proposal. Even though the Duke and she were not in love, Heather hoped that they would have a good relationship. And since she has already made this decision, there is no point in retreating. The girl thought that perhaps the Duke had no reason to marry her, and she asked the butler to bring her a marriage certificate. Heather asked if she would become a duchess after she signed it. Gilliam replied that it would only become valid once the duke signed it. Next, all they have to do is send it to the imperial family. Heather signed it and said to the butler, Now I would like to restore the garden. And the girl asked to gather all the servants here for her. She said that yesterday she received permission from the duke to do this. Gilliam asked Heather when she saw his lordship. Heather replied last night. But since the room was very dark, she couldn't see his face well. In addition, he is a rather private person. The maids discussed among themselves in the hall why they were all gathered here. Heather Argent introduced herself as the future Duchess of Eckerd and the future mistress of this house. The girl said that from now on, she begins restoration of the garden and she needs help. The gardener and several other maids volunteered to help. When they went out into the garden, one maid noticed that two days had already passed and the weather was still as good. Heather realized that for them, as for Gilliam, the sun was a very rare sight. Then the girl rolled up her sleeves and said, Today we will remove all the weeds and wilted plants. The maids were very surprised that the future duchess would do the same work as them. Heather told them that if they worked together, the job would get done a little faster. When most of the work was done, Heather said she would bring everyone some snacks. Jenna wanted to go instead, 
but the girl said that everything was fine and she still wanted to go to learn the way here. When Heather approached the dining room, her path was blocked by a huge man in an apron. The girl believed that there were only three important things in life, home, clothes, and food. And when she asked the man for a sandwich, he brought her something similar, but with a terrible fishy smell. Heather couldn't even stand the smell. The girl said that she would not eat it and asked to use the kitchen. So she would like to prepare the sandwich to her liking, just like she ate at home. When Heather looked at what to cook with, there was a lot of seafood. The cook explained to her that people from other regions cannot just enter and move around the eastern regions. Therefore, all food resources are supplied by locals to each other. Here, not far from the sea, there is a big river, so there is nothing easier than getting seafood. When Heather finished making the sandwich, she offered the chef a taste. The cook was delighted and asked if the girl knew any new dishes. Heather said she had to go, but she would tell him a few things. Then the cook took a pen and paper and began to write down. The maids were also delighted with the sandwiches. After a hard day, Heather fell onto her bed exhausted. She was thinking about the design of the garden and how quickly the restoration of the garden would be completed. She was glad that there were helpers. But the biggest problem for her was that the Duke did not want to show her his face. Suddenly the girl noticed that she had injured her hand while working in the garden. Heather woke up again when it was dark outside, and she again saw the silhouette of the Duke in the darkness. The girl told him that she signed the marriage certificate. And if he also signed it, that means they are now married. Now, wherever she goes, she will be called Duchess Eckerd instead of her given name. But at the same time, she doesn't even know what her husband looks like. Even if he was as scary as the rumors predicted, she promised herself that she wouldn't care. You have to show me your face, right? Heather asked. Now is not the time, replied the Duke. The girl thought that if he didn't want to show his face, he wouldn't even want to talk to her. Why do you come to my chambers every night? You are the one who proposed to me the girl said, and came too close to him and saw his face in the light of the moon. The duke left, and Heather thought she noticed something shiny on his face. It looked like fish scales. He really is a monstrous duke, Heather thought. But she decided that there was nothing like that, even if he really was a monster, as long as he doesn't harm anyone. Moreover, now on paper they are legal husband and wife. When Heather went out into the garden, she saw many workers there who were busy with their business. They said that the duke ordered them to help her with the restoration of the garden. A week later, the garden was tidied up and weeded. The flowers grew beautifully and lushly. Even the broken fence was repaired and strengthened. Everything went well with the garden. The duchess deducted money from the salaries of those maids who showed aggression towards others. And Heather decided that she should learn everything about this place, from history to social etiquette. The sign of the duke is a dragon that holds a precious stone in its mouth. The dragon is a mythical creature from legends that has special significance in the Bernia Empire. When the first man stepped onto the frozen ground of the tundra, he saw a dragon descending through the clouds. The dragon made friends with people and melted the ice with his breath. Then he dispelled the mists with his claws, and in this place people laid the foundation for a new empire. Dragon turned the wasteland into a fertile and prosperous land, and the emperor built the Bernia Empire. Rumors say that the duke has the blood of a dragon running through his veins, but this is just a myth. There is not a single confirmation that this is true. Who believes in myths anyway? The Duke always lived in the barren East and never took a step beyond it. But everyone thinks that he is a real descendant of the dragon. That's why he got the best territory. Either way, no one knows the whole truth, Heather thought. And suddenly, she heard voices and footsteps approaching her. For what are we going to do with this arrogant woman? She must be sleeping now. We can take a couple of valuable things, right? They said. When they noticed that the girl was not on the bed, the servants began to look for her around the room. I wonder where our lady is hiding, the headmaid said to the others. Duchess, you will have more fun with us than with the monstrous duke, said the maid, and ordered to search every corner to find her. When the maid ordered a look into the dressing room, Heather's heart sank. But then, something happened and the room became quiet. Someone opened the dressing room door. Are you okay? Duke Eckert asked Heather. Duke? asked the girl. Yes, Heather, I, Cassian Eckerd. They stood and held hands in the moonlight by the window. Master, your body has returned to normal. Are you going to meet the lady today, sir? Butler Gilliam asked the duke. He added that the girl really wants to meet him, and today she asked about him again. Of course, he said that the duke was not there, but she might not understand it that way. It seems like she hates me now, said the duke. Gilliam advised the duke to establish communication with the lady because she is a good person. And the butler added that the guy would regret it if he didn't do this. 
The Duke told Gilliam that he understood, and he would try to talk to Heather. As the Duke walked down the corridor, he thought, I wonder if Heather is already asleep. I want to meet her before I leave for the hunt. Then he heard voices in her room. And now he is with her, hugs her around the waist and presses her to him. Duke, is that you? She asked. Yes, I, Cassian Eckerd, the guy answered. He leaned over her face. The girl didn't understand why her heart was beating so fast and her chest felt tight. Their lips were so close. This distance and breathing, Heather did not know what was happening to her. The Duke apologized, releasing the girl, and said that he would take her into the hall. When they entered the corridor, Cassian said that he would soon need to go hunting. Heather asked if he had a lounge room for her. Cassian offered her the use of his bedroom. The girl was at a loss. As it turned out, there were no other rooms. Heather couldn't believe it, but she thought it was a good chance to be alone with him and talk about everything. Unlike ordinary people, noble couples stay in the same bedroom only when they want to satisfy their sexual desires. The girl did not have the slightest idea what awaited her ahead, so she wanted to explain everything to them here and now. The Duke carried Heather into his bedroom in his arms. When the Duke sat her down on the bed, the girl felt as if the atmosphere suggested that something was about to happen. Cassian walked up to her, stroked her face and said, Good dreams. The girl was perplexed that this was all. She didn't expect much from the silent Duke, but she didn't understand how things turned out this way. Heather thought that he should pay her some attention after such an incident happened to her today, which she hoped would never happen again. When Heather woke up from nightmares that plagued her, she saw thick fog outside the window. This is exactly what the weather was like in the east all year round. Jenna knocked on the Duchess's room. She asked how the lady slept and told about the fog through which you couldn't see anything, how she didn't try to see. Then, the maid said that she was very surprised when she learned that her mistress had spent the night in the Duke's bedroom. Heather admitted that nothing happened between them. Butler Gilliam knocked on the door and asked how Heather was feeling. He learned the news from the Duke and came to her to apologize for the servants, feeling his guilt in this incident. Gilliam admitted that the mansion had changed a lot since her arrival. Since the Duke took over the title from his parents, the building has finally returned to its original appearance. From now on I have tightened the security of the building and all old personnel will be replaced for your safety, madam. So please don't leave him, said the butler. Even so, what happened yesterday made me be on guard. I don't plan on leaving this place, Heather answered him. Gilliam thanked her for her trust and said he would prepare another bedroom for her. The girl replied that any room would suit her, but she was very interested in where the Duke slept. The butler replied that his lordship was sleeping in the drawing room, and he added that she now sees the weather prevailing in the eastern territories. Heather had truly never seen such dense fog. The fog obscures the view of the garden so that nothing can be seen from the window. This is probably the reason why the garden was abandoned. Gilliam said that breakfast was ready and invited her to go to the dining room now. At the table, Heather thanked Cassian for lending her his bedroom, but the duke was silent. Heather noticed that he had magical sapphire blue eyes and his skin was slightly pale. He sat far from her on the other side of the table. For some reason, her heart slowed down, as if skipping a beat when she looked at him, and the girl did not understand what was happening to her. Cassian Eckerd lost his parents at a very young age, while still a child. He was broken and saw no point in living. The curse fell on him, and he was forced to take over the title of head of the House of Eckard. These events were enough to break him. Cassian looked out the window at the rain. He had been guarding the corridor outside Heather's room until dawn, and was so tired. The Duke did not expect that he was unable to cope with his own people. Gilliam said his thoughts were inconsistent with the situation. Cassian replied that these were not only his duties, but he primarily ordered him to manage the castle. And since the castle's security was so weak, they must fix it now. To begin with, the Duke decided to start with the servants. Heather looked out the window and was sad. She just wanted to go for a walk, but it was raining heavily. The good weather lasted for three whole days, and the girl completely forgot that the weather here is so rainy all the time. It would be nice if the rain stopped, said the Duchess, and suddenly it stopped again. The clouds cleared and the sun shone. The maids were surprised and told her that it was she who stopped the rain. One maid asked another if it didn't look like the dragon pearl from the legends. They told Heather that there was an old legend from the east. It reads, the sun will rise again when the dragon pearl returns to the east. But the girl denied, considering it a mere coincidence. The Duchess asked for a carriage to be prepared for the trip to the city. When Heather got into the carriage, Cassian was already sitting in it. He said that he also needed to go to the city. When they arrived in the city, the Duke did not go about his business. He said that he had some free time and would like to accompany his wife. 
They entered the store, and the Duchess told the salesman that she would like to buy several types of seeds. The seller said that in recent sunny days, more people are interested in the seeds. Heather decided that she would look at all the seeds that the store had. Seed prices were much higher than in the capital. The girl said that, first of all, she needed seeds for the garden. Cassian asked the seller, How much? The seller asked what exactly. How much does this store cost? The duke asked and put a decent bag of coins on the counter. If that's not enough, I can give more. He added, Oh, wait a minute, are you kidding me? Why did you decide to buy the entire store? Heather asked her husband. If I buy the entire store, you won't have to worry. Cassian answered her. So this is how rich people think? The girl thought. Heather replied to her husband. Even if you buy the entire store, I won't be able to manage it, so please don't. You are, of course, free to do whatever you want with your money, but Cassian replied that she had every right to interfere in his affairs. Heather replied that buying a store was not rational, because a lot of money would be needed for its development. But the girl added that it is a good idea to enter into an agreement with the store and purchase seeds at lower prices. Heather asked the seller for ten different types of seeds. As they left the store, the Duchess noticed drunken men fighting in the street. It turned out that residents of the East often get drunk like this. Afterwards, Heather asked if they could visit the bookstore. Cassian told her not to worry, and that it was his day off. The girl was surprised. She thought he would be annoyed, but the Duke respects her wishes. On the way, they saw a crazy man who called himself a fish and wanted to jump into the water from the bridge. Heather thought that her brother was right. A lot of people in the East suffer from severe depression because of the weather. The crime rate is also high due to the lack of law enforcement. When Cassian apologized to her for all this chaos, the girl wondered why he was apologizing. And then, she realized, the East was under his control. Let's change this place for the better step-by-step -step in the future, don't you think? Heather suggested. Cassian agreed and they went to the bookstore. After that, they went to a restaurant to have something to eat. The girl said that she did not know what food to choose and asked her husband to order his favorite dish. When he said that he would choose, Heather thought it was so nice to hear his cold voice, and this man was her husband. The dish was disgusting. It seemed to the girl that the Duke was upset, but everyone around was overexcited because of the sunlight. At the next table, Heather heard a strange conversation. We should have had the opportunity to enjoy weather like this before. It's the Duke's fault that the sun didn't shine before, one guy said to the other. What are they talking about? Were the eastern lands cursed because of Duke Eckerd? Heather thought. The guy continued and said that everyone thinks so. To tell you the truth, I don't know anything good about the Duke, guys. It's scary that we're ruled by a monster Duke. I would like to see how ugly he is, the guy said. He just heard all these words, but his face didn't move, Heather thought. The guys continued to discuss the Duke and the fact that he got married. I heard she came from the capital, but I don't know why she should marry a Duke from the East. Since she married the monstrous Duke, her family must be very poor. But are they so poor that they sold their own daughter to the ends of the earth? Because no rich family would allow this to happen. The girl could no longer listen to them and jumped up from the table. She told her husband that she wanted to go home now and not stay here a minute longer. As they rode in the carriage, Heather apologized to the Duke for being rude. Cassian replied that everything was fine and he understood her. He's just used to hearing things like that to himself. Later the girl thanked Cassian for a wonderful evening, and he said that he really enjoyed spending time with her. Cassian handed Heather something wrapped in cloth. Here, I bought this while I was waiting outside while you were at the bookstore. It can be used as a weapon. Heather unrolled the fabric, and there was a candlestick with a sharp and long end. The girl thanked the Duke for taking such care of her. Entering her room, Heather set the candlestick on the table and thought that it had been a long time since the last time she contacted her family. The girl decided to write them a letter. To my beloved father and brother, do you eat well while I'm away? I hope you are doing well. Did Raiden do anything after I left for the East? I will find a way to pay off the family debts as quickly as I can. The girl did not finish writing the letter and fell asleep right at the table. When it was deep night outside, Cassian came to her again. He walked over, stroked her hair and said, Heather, I don't know how to start this conversation, because I'm afraid it will hurt you, but I don't know how to make you happy, but I'm sure of only one thing. My heart belongs to you. Cassian noticed the letter and read it. Meanwhile, Raiden was rushing about with anger. Is this girl really just pretending to be innocent in front of me? If Duke Eckert had proposed a little later, but how did the Eastern monster, who never left the East, even meet Heather? His head was bursting with the number of thoughts and inexplicable information. As a result, Raiden decided that he should visit the Argent family and demand repayment of the debt. 
The guy ordered a crew to be prepared for him, and he was told that they had a problem. Many crews unexpectedly visited their mansion. The crews have arrived from the east and say they have come to pay off Count Argent's debts. This was a new unexpected blow for Raiden. Heather woke up and did not understand who covered her with a blanket. After all, she didn't ask anyone to bring a blanket before she fell asleep. So someone came in while she was sleeping. The girl was very interested in who sheltered her, but she was very hungry. She had not eaten anything since yesterday. Therefore, she decided to go to the dining room first. There she met a cook she already knew. The Duchess asked if he had quit. He asked why he should quit. He just took a couple of days off. As Heather ate her breakfast, which was finally edible, she asked the cook if he needed to tell Gilliam to take the day off. The cook replied that it was not necessary because they solve such issues on their own. The Duchess was amazed that the employees of the estate decided for themselves what to do. The girl realized that the problem with the estate's employees was much more serious than she thought. She decided that she would need to reorganize the chain of command. A couple of days ago I saw the face of the master. His lordship, he is definitely not what the rumors make him out to be. I almost couldn't see him. I saw him only from afar, but he was beautiful like a sculpture, one maid said to another. What? You must be mistaken. You are completely ignorant. A long time ago, there was a worker here who saw the master's face and was immediately struck. The last thing he said before he left was that his lordship is a monster, replied the other maid. Heather, who overheard this conversation, accepted that such ridiculous rumors were constantly being passed around. Therefore, new employees will need to be hired and strictly order them to refrain from spreading rumors. The Duchess was also concerned about the Duke's financial literacy, which he demonstrated yesterday. Heather decided she should check the books. And just as she was walking along the corridor, she met the butler Gilliam and asked him about the accountant. The butler replied that he would take her to his office. Heather had a hard time negotiating with the accountant to hand over the ledger to her. Sitting in her room, she looked through the accounting book and was perplexed. There were only notes consisting of descriptions of objects. For some reason, a lot of accessories were purchased, and the income did not match the expenses. And all transactions had to be recorded in this book. Heather understood what was going on. Three days later, the Duchess entered the accountant's office and informed him that from that day on she would be in charge of financial matters. She showed him her ledger and told him that it contained everything he had missed in his. The accountant shouted that this was some kind of misunderstanding, but the Duchess replied that the difference between the transactions in these two accounting records is clear as day. Then, he admitted that he had committed a sin that was worse than death. You will get back all the money you embezzled during all this time, Heather said. The accountant on his knees said that this was not possible. Don't you have the slightest idea that theft of funds on such a scale easily brings you to the death penalty? Asked the Duchess. If you reveal the names of everyone involved in this crime, you will receive a reduced sentence, she added. The guy gave the Duchess a book with names. The book was big. Heather was in her room studying this book. She couldn't even imagine that so many people were involved in this. It felt like she had a knife stuck in her back. The girl foresaw this, but could not even think that it would be so difficult. This is more than enough to turn the entire mansion upside down. Heather decided to take a short walk outside to calm down, but since it was already night, she needed to call Gilliam. When she went out into the corridor, she saw Cassian there. Your Grace? Heather asked in surprise. Cassian replied that he heard that she wanted to go for a walk and decided to keep her company. Your Grace in person? She said in surprise. On the street, Heather decided to break the awkward silence and asked her husband if he had been informed about the accounting matter. The Duke responded positively. There are a lot of people involved in the theft case, a lot more than I originally thought. I'm not sure that publicity on this issue is the best solution, she continued. To be completely honest, we can easily solve this problem if I close my eyes. But I wouldn't want to do that, Heather said. The Duke answered his wife that she was free to do as she saw fit, and he would support any of her decisions. After all, it was his incompetence that caused these events. And Cassian added that if anyone objects, she can always appeal to his authority. Heather thanked his lordship for his support. Then... The duke admitted that he would soon have to leave the castle for several days. This will be a hunt in which he must participate. Then, Heather wished him good luck and bring lots of trophies to serve on the table. And Cassian gently wrapped her in his coat so that she would not freeze. In the morning, the duchess gathered a large number of servants and asked if everything was on the list. She said that they no longer needed to come to work. When the servants began to wonder why, the girl realized that she needed to formulate what was happening into a simple form for them to understand. Heather responded, 
Either you return every item of value, every penny that was stolen during this time, or you obediently leave the workplace. The choice is yours. The Duchess offered to meet separately with those who wished to speak with her. But their eyes were full of resentment, directed at her. And not one of them thought about their own actions. Do you even deserve the title of Duchess in this castle? You didn't even have a wedding ceremony with his lordship. Did you think we wouldn't find out? We obey not the Duchess, but his Serene Highness, the Duke. We need proof that his lordship approved of your actions, the servant said. How dare you express your dissatisfaction with my wife's decisions, said the Duke as he entered the hall. Who are you anyway? asked one of the servants. What impudence! Show respect to his Serene Highness, the Duke, said the butler Gilliam, standing next to Heather. The servants were perplexed that this was the Duke. The Duke ordered the guards to be called. Then he ordered these servants to be locked in a prison cell and reported to him about their behavior. And if anything goes wrong, he will hold the entire guard accountable. Cassian called his wife to leave with him if she didn't mind. As they sat outside, the Duke apologized to her for the incident. But Heather replied that on the contrary, she should thank him for his help. Cassian replied that now they would not have enough employees, and he would ask Gilliam to prepare advertisements with vacancies. The girl asked him to leave everything as it is for a while. Some of the servants do not even have the necessary skills to work in the castle. Heather wanted to focus on those who remained, train these servants to work and make sure they are on her side. All in all, she had a lot of work to do. Remembering that the Duke would soon go hunting, Heather said that she had prepared a small gift for him. It was a scarf. The Duke looked at him with a sad face. She admitted that she would like to give him something more valuable, but after all, this thing should not interfere with his hunting. Cassian thanked Heather for the gift. The girl asked her husband to take care of himself on the way and promised to wait for him at home. And he, in turn, promised her to return from the hunt as soon as possible. Thanks to what happened, the atmosphere in the castle acquired dramatic changes. Heather tried to improve relationships with the remaining employees, and the servants who realized this began to adhere to her new rules. Plus, the castle's biggest problem had been solved. The food was finally edible. Now that some kind of system had appeared in this place, the Duchess accepted that they needed more people, because those that were already not enough. Heather looked out the window from her room. Today it was foggy. She thought about the fact that the hunt was supposed to begin today. Heather remembered the Duke's face before leaving. She really wanted him to return as soon as possible, safe and invisible. At this time, Cassian was fighting with a white lion made of snow, and there was no end to them there. He was informed that they had already cleared halfway from west to east, and they would stop here for the night. The Duke sat down near the fire and took out a scarf with patterns. He was looking at the scarf, and a guy came up to him and said that since the sun rose in the east, the speed of fog spreading has decreased significantly. The guy said he believed they would finish the hunt within a week. The Duke said they would finish in four days and return home. You see, this time I made a promise to return as soon as possible, Cassian said to all his soldiers and they did not recognize the former duke. Hmm, just when I thought he was hiding for a while. But a wedding, also with a girl from a family of fallen nobility, said Emperor Van Dion Ahad Bernia. I can't understand what he was thinking. After he saw the death of his parents with his own eyes, I thought he would grow up more reasonable. But this marriage and everything else. It looks like he's raising his head and doesn't want to play the bystander anymore. Descendant of the dragon, huh? Now he is nothing more than an empty-headed scarecrow, the emperor was angry. He ordered Chamberlain to send a letter to Duke Eckerd and summon him to the capital along with his wife. The emperor added that it had been a long time since he had seen him in person. Heather was riding in a carriage and was very tired. Today she learned a lot of new information about the noble circles of the East by attending a small tea party, and also the girl got at least some idea of how high society works here. She was also really looking forward to his lordship's return. Stepping out of the carriage, Heather was very surprised to see Cassian greeting her. The girl asked her husband if he had time now. She would like to talk to him. The Duke replied that they could do this in his office. Heather had never been in his office before. There were a lot of books inside, but the girl thought that the atmosphere here was rather dull. Cassian asked his wife how her day was. She told where she had been and that she liked it more than she expected. Then, Heather asked her husband about hunting. The guy said that he had no interesting stories for her, but the girl replied that she would be happy to listen to minor cases. Then, Heather asked where his soldiers, or the people who were with him on the hunt were. Cassian replied that they were just people helping him. The girl was surprised by this. Heather realized that these were not government soldiers. Then the girl decided to ask her husband the question that worried her so much. Your Grace, how did you know about me? 
Perhaps we crossed paths with you earlier, at a banquet in the capital, for example, Heather asked. No, this never happened. Our first meeting was here in this castle, Cassian answered her. Heather smiled at her husband, although, in fact, she did not understand how he found her then, and why he did not want to talk about it. Cassian offered to show his wife to her chambers. Gilliam asked the Duke if his insomnia was bothering him. Cassian replied that he had not had nightmares since Heather arrived in the East. The guy thought it would be nice to get close to her. Gilliam said he sorted the mail. There was an invitation to a banquet and theater tickets. Cassian asked for tickets. Heather couldn't decide what to wear to the theater. The style and cut of the dresses were different from her usual clothes, but she decided that she would choose from them, so his lordship personally prepared them for her. When the girl was ready, she doubted that she was not overdressed for a simple trip to the theater. Cassian looked into her room and said that she looked great. The Duke suggested that his wife choose another hat or other accessory. Heather asked her husband to choose for her. He chose a hat and said it suited her very well. When they were already sitting in the theater, the girl noticed that it was quite lively here. Cassian said that he became a little familiar with the plot of the play. The production will be about revenge. He added that it would be better if it were a family play, but this genre is not very popular in the East. Heather didn't understand how he knew she liked family plays, since she didn't mention it. The performance has begun. The guy on stage hit the girl in the face with all his might. It was the first time Heather had watched something like this. She felt very sorry for the actress. Then, she felt her husband holding her hand. Does he really need to hold on to something because what is happening on stage is shocking, Heather thought. His touch made it difficult for her to concentrate on the play. As a result, Heather missed everything that happened in the second act. But she noted that the acting was excellent. The Duke asked Heather if she liked the performance. The girl replied that the actors really did a great job and did a good job. The Duchess's praise is a huge honor for us, said the actress, coming closer to them. Oh, are you the actress who got slapped? Is your cheek okay? Heather asked. Of course, madam. It doesn't hurt if it's for the sake of art, the actress replied, and thanked the Duchess for brightening up the theater with her presence. Heather thanked another actor for his performance. He replied that it was incredible to receive such a compliment from such a beautiful Duchess, and took her hands. The actor invited Heather to their next production. The girl barely had time to answer that she would try when the Duke pushed the actor away from her, saying that he was too close to his wife. The guy apologized and left, and the Duke said to Heather, My wife, I think it would be better if we leave before the people come. The Duchess agreed with him. On the street they saw a crowd discussing their carriage. This by any chance is not Duke Eckhart's carriage. Has his lordship really come to the performance? Heather asked her husband what they should do now. They would probably have to wait. But Cassian suggested that she take a walk. The girl was surprised, because it is not safe to walk around the city at night. The Duke replied that this area was quite lively, and moreover, they were accompanied by knights. They follow them in secret so that the Duke and Duchess do not stand out from the crowd. Cassian remembered that lunch was a long time ago, and it was time for them to have dinner. Heather asked if all the restaurants were closed already. The Duke replied that he knew one place. It was a stall with shrimp skewers. The Duke asked the seller not to add sauce. She was very surprised and reminded him that the taste would be completely different. Cassian handed two skewers to his wife. She looked at him and he asked, Don't you like shrimp anymore? More? Oh, I love them. They're just still in your hands. Heather really liked the shrimp, thanked the seller and decided to return to the carriage. An unusual play. Grilled shrimp from a stall. All this was new to the girl. The Duchess thanked her husband for this day and admitted that she really had a good time. The Duke replied that he was glad that she liked it. I have to answer him, but I can't say a word, fascinated by his face. I'm not smiling yet, but I feel strange emotions overwhelming me, Heather thought. A few days later, Heather remembered the Duke's face and blushed while lying in bed. It seemed to her that he had an ideal appearance. Then, she thought, after all, they are not even married yet. His lordship had some purpose in proposing to her. She was given some powers, but there was no wedding yet. And Heather thought that this could only mean one thing. His lordship did not want to get close to her. Therefore, she believed that she should not experience any feelings. By the way, Heather hasn't seen him for several days. She wondered if he was really that busy. The girl decided to look for her husband in the office. When she knocked on his office, she heard something about a few days in the capital. Cassian opened the door and said, Come in, my wife. Heather noticed that despite the good weather, the Duke was still dressed warmly and wondered if he was really that cold. The girl noticed a golden envelope in his hands. She immediately realized what it was. You seem to be very busy lately, your grace, Heather said. 
Yes, I have some things to do, Cassian replied. Heather admitted that she wanted to discuss something else with him, but overheard them talking about the capital. The Duke said that the Imperial family had sent a letter, and they are invited to the palace. The girl was perplexed and asked who there was. Cassian replied, You, my wife, and me. Heather didn't know what to answer. On the day of departure for the capital, getting into the carriage with the madam, Jenna said, I didn't expect that we would return to the capital so soon, madam. Jenna admitted that she was very worried when they arrived here, but the East turned out to be more hospitable than they expected, and she was very happy for the lady. After all, her mistress and his lordship have such a warm relationship. Besides, she always hoped that the lady would still marry that man. Jenna remembered that every time she went to bed, the lady would tell stories about this gentleman, and she still remembers each one. They were like from books. But no matter how hard Heather tried, she couldn't remember anything. She decided that it wasn't such an important memory that she had forgotten about it. When they stopped to rest a little on the way, the Duke approached the girl and asked if she was okay. There were still two days of travel to the capital. Tell me, what do you think about staying at Argenta Castle while we are in the capital? Cassian asked Heather. The girl replied that this was a good idea, but she was a little worried about her father and brother. They are both knights, so they can behave somewhat rudely. Cassian said he would take note of this. Heather asked her husband if they should demonstrate the sweet couple. The Duke replied that he would try very hard. The girl was pleased with his answer. A few days later, Heather's father and brother were looking out for them outside their mansion. The father did not believe that this day had finally come. They haven't seen each other for so long. The father admitted that every day he looks at his daughter's portrait, afraid that he will forget what she looks like. The brother said that judging by the letters, she is doing well. But the father assumed that it could also be that the duke was threatening his beloved daughter, and she had no choice but to stand up for him. They decided that if they felt like Heather was unhappy and struggling in the slightest, they would file for divorce and work harder to pay off the debt. When the carriages arrived and Heather stepped out with the Duke, her father and brother rushed to hug her. Then, the father asked her who this man was. Heather replied that it was his grace, her husband, Cassian Eckerd. The brother whispered in his father's ear that the rumors were blatantly false and the Duke was very attractive. The hosts greeted his grace and invited him into the house and Cassian thanked them for the warm welcome. The brother asked what kind of things these were in large quantities. Cassian replied that these were all gifts for them. The owners refused to accept them for a long time, but the duke said that he would not take them back. Then the father said that they would be happy to accept hotels and offered to go to their house. One chamber for two was prepared for the duke and duchess. When Heather asked her father about the chambers, he asked what was wrong. But the girl couldn't tell him that she and the duke hadn't shared a bedroom yet, so she said it was okay. Heather told her father that they would go to their quarters to rest. Once there, Cassian noticed that their family had a fairly close relationship. The girl admitted that this was so, but she was worried that her house was quite small compared to the Duke's mansion. But Cassian thought it was quite spacious. The guy said that if she was embarrassed by living with him in the same chambers, then he could sleep outside. But Heather objected. She believed that they needed to take care of each other while they were in the capital. Jenna burst into their room and called them to dinner. Then she apologized that she did it out of habit and didn't want to disturb them. Heather said it was okay. At dinner, Heather had a hard time eating anything, because she had not yet moved away from the road in which she was severely seasick. The father asked his daughter to at least eat something. He noticed that she had lost a lot of weight. Heather replied that it was, as she had no appetite lately. But now that she's home, she'll try to eat a lot. The girl thought that if she didn't eat anything, her father and brother would make a fuss. Therefore, she decided to eat a few spoons of soup and then go to her room. But as soon as Heather put food in her mouth, she felt sick. Cassian asked caringly, Heather, are you feeling well? The father was furious. What is happening, your grace? The father said that his lordship had to pay the closest attention to his daughter's health. And the brother reassured his father and hinted at his sister's situation. But Heather objected, explaining to everyone that she was not pregnant and that she and the duke were very busy and the birth of an heir was not yet in their plans. The hosts apologized to his lordship and Heather for their rudeness and offered to continue their meal. The father asked the duke if he liked the dishes. Cassian replied that he really liked their food, and in the east the cuisine was somewhat different. Then the father asked Heather to leave him and his brother alone with her husband. The girl asked her husband if he was okay. Cassian replied that everything was fine and invited her to rest in his chambers. Heather didn't mind taking a little break from the road. When the men were left alone in the room, the father asked, Your Grace, I heard that you took on our debts? Yes, that's true, replied the Duke. 
We will return everything to the last penny, said the father. Our family did not sell Heather, your lordship, so we cannot accept this money, he continued. Cassian replied that he paid off their family's debts because he didn't want to see Heather unhappy because of her problems, and he added that the idea of appeasing her with money never occurred to him. She came to me when I was paying off your borrowers, and I told Heather that I was simply returning the funds that my father borrowed from the previous earl in order to stop all sorts of gossip, so you don't have to worry. The father was very grateful to the duke for this, but still insisted on returning the entire amount to him. This may take some time, but he really asked not to refuse. The duke replied that if he insisted so, then he had no choice but to agree. He just asked me to keep it a secret from his wife. Then, the father said that he would like to ask something else. Why did his lordship choose his daughter from so many worthy ladies? Because it has to be her. We've already met once. If you want to know why I proposed to her, I'll answer that she is all I have left, answered the duke. But Heather doesn't remember anything, so he asked them not to let her in on the details of this conversation. Meanwhile, Heather was taking a bath. She didn't understand why they were talking for so long. On the other hand, the current situation did cause a lot of misunderstanding. She was so busy with work and thought that they were a couple only according to documents. The question of an heir simply flew out of her head. The Duke treats her too politely, although she was sure that his kindness to her was selfless. Duke Eckerd suddenly entered her bathroom and Heather screamed. Her father and brother came running to her screams. They were saying that something had happened. But when everything was resolved, everyone went to their rooms. Heather and Cassian were sitting on the bed. The Duke admitted that he was unfamiliar with the space of this mansion, and he was looking for her. And Cassian apologized for accidentally walking into her bathroom. Heather replied that everything was fine, and asked if her relatives were putting pressure on him. Cassian replied that there was nothing like that, and they treated him well. The Duke gently began to dry his wife's wet hair with a towel. Heather thanked the Duke for the gifts that he brought to her family, but asked him to warn her about this next time. He replied that they were from the bottom of his heart. When they went to bed, Heather was too nervous to sleep. She looked at her husband sleeping next to her and could not understand why he proposed to her. And why does he treat her with such kindness, while he refuses to even perform the wedding ceremony? The Duke was full of secrets and mysteries for her. In the morning, when Cassian was about to leave, Heather came out to see him off. The Duke said that this was not necessary, but she hugged him and said that they should play a couple in love. After the Duke left, Heather and her family discussed what they would do that day and decided to spend time together as a family, just like before. At this time, Raiden noticed the Duke's carriage and thought, they have become quite brave since they returned to the capital so quickly. This frost-bitten Duke will pay for everything. When Cassian arrived at the palace of Emperor Vandian, he thought, nothing has changed at all since I have not been here. The Emperor, meeting him on the throne, said, long time no see, Duke Eckerd. You and I are not in a relationship where we can have small talk, so let's get straight to the point. So, what have you done? For several months now, the weather conditions in the capital have been worse than ever. Did he use some secret method behind my back, or did you neglect your duties? asked the Emperor. Your Majesty, if through my fault the weather in the capital had deteriorated, then all the eastern lands would be the first to go under water, Cassian answered him. Then the Emperor asked what was the matter, and he added that he had heard that there had been a miracle in the east lately, how good it was. The Duke replied that it was not in his power to know the reasons. The Emperor looked at Duke Eckerd with hatred. Just a copy of his father, he thought. The Emperor asked if it was true that he had married a girl from the Argenta family. In parting, the Emperor reminded the Duke that the dragon's heart was in his palace. As he left, Cassian thought that this was indeed strange. As soon as Heather arrived in the east, the weather changed. He didn't even imagine that it could be so sunny and clear there. Therefore, the Emperor has reasons to suspect him. If only I had not proposed to Heather, she might have continued to live in blissful ignorance. When I erased her memory, I promised not to interfere in her life. But I have to live it as before. I can't avoid problems anymore, at least for Heather's sake. No more cowardly escapes, the guy decided. The father and brother persuaded the girl to go into the house, but she decided to talk to Raiden, who approached them. After all, he looked for her so diligently. Heather, they say you came back yesterday. For what reason in our area? asked Raiden. The girl replied that she was not obliged to report to him. Even if there is a reason, it's none of your business. Barging in uninvited blatant impudence, Heather continued. Impudence? Do you think you've paid off your debts and can turn up your nose? The guy asked. The girl did not understand what he was talking about, and Raiden continued, Don't you know that your hubby, the monster duke, paid your debts? 
Moreover, he did it in the most humiliating way. He sent a string of carriages with valuable things and lined them up in front of my house. I had to pay one and a half thousand gold pieces to have everything brought in. Until everything was moved, everyone used the back door. I demand an immediate apology, Raiden said. Heather looked at her brother and asked if he was aware. The brother replied that he just didn't want her to worry. She said it was her business, too. Raiden was angry that everyone was ignoring him. He invited Heather to return to him and leave her monster husband. If she does this now, he will forgive her and accept her. But Heather became very angry. The weather outside instantly turned bad, and lightning flashed above them. You know I'm in such a bad mood right now, Raiden Argent, Heather said. How dare you talk to me like that? Raiden was indignant. Heather replied that she did not invite him and asked her guards to escort him away. Then, she talked to her brother and father in the house about the situation that had developed. The brother said that they themselves learned everything from Raiden himself and did not want to bother her. Then Heather said with a sad look, It seems that rumors that I was simply sold to the Duke cannot be avoided. But the brother objected. No, his lordship took care of that too. The brother said that Cassian told everyone that he simply paid Raiden's family for the help of the previous count. Heather thought he even took care of that. The girl was completely confused. On the one hand, she was very grateful to him, but at the same time, being indebted was very burdensome. She was upset because she didn't understand why he treated her like that and was so kind to her. Heather told her brother that she wanted to talk to his lordship. Heather met her husband upon his arrival and asked him to spend some time with her. The girl told him that Raiden had come and told her that Cassian had repaid the debt. Then Heather asked why he did it. She said that everyone thought she was an unreasonable child. But Cassian admitted that he did not want to offend her. The girl asked, Did you think that if I found out I would glow with happiness? To be honest, I feel disgusting and I don't even smell of happiness. Heather admitted that if something happened between them, then first of all she would remember this debt. And in relationships she wants to be equal. Cassian replied that he didn't think about it, and it was his mistake. Heather said she would help her father pay off his debt and asked him to be honest with her next time. The Duke agreed with her, and Heather told him that she was going to meet her friends tomorrow, since they had not seen each other for a very long time. And so in the morning, he will be alone. Then the husband handed the girl a wad of money so that she could sit with her friends in a restaurant. Heather refused at first, but then took the money and thanked her husband. After the ruin of her family, Heather stopped visiting secular society and now it was somehow unusual for her to be here. And in a few days there will be a reception, and for the first time in a long time, she will go out in public and at the same time learn the latest news. Her thoughts were interrupted by her friends. Heather, how many years, how many winters? I thought we were going to hang out at your wedding. They say you married a duke, you've settled down well, said one of the friends. Heather invited them to sit down at the table and talk about everything, since they really hadn't seen each other for a long time. Her friends didn't believe that she would pay for everything on the table. It was an upscale, expensive restaurant, so one of the friends said it was good to have high status, because if she had come here alone, she wouldn't have been allowed on the threshold. Another friend asked Heather how Duke Eckerd was doing with his money. Heather replied that she didn't know for sure, but it wasn't all bad. He is one of the five dukes of our empire, and you say that not everything is so bad. Maybe you don't want to say that he's filthy rich, the friend asked. Then the friends asked how she liked the East. Were the rumors about him true? Heather replied that there was some truth in those gossips, however. Some of them seemed to be lies. My friends liked her vague answer and demanded details. Then the girl said that the weather there was better than she thought, and the people were warlike. Some of them replied that this is really not what they were told, and the rumors are lies. Then Heather asked her friends if they were going to the Imperial reception. Everyone answered that, of course, they would not miss the appointment. It is held only a couple of times a year, and no one misses this opportunity to go there. Heather asked her friends how things were going in secular society. The Empress does not often appear in public, so the Crown Princess runs the social society in the capital. Of course, many people like the Emperor's daughter, but because of her unfriendly nature, no one can make friends with her. It is very difficult to have a normal conversation with her. The girl thought that this information was more than enough, and she had not wasted her money on desserts in vain. She decided that there was nothing wrong with her trying to be friendly. And if everything works out, then all the bad rumors about the Duke will disappear. Her friends asked her about the Duke. How does she like his lordship and what kind of person he is? Because if you believe the rumors, he is a monster. Heather replied that he was incredibly handsome. What did you say? This is impossible. Where do these terrible rumors come from? Asked the friends. At that moment, her husband appeared behind Heather. 
He apologized to his wife for scaring her. The guy introduced himself to his friends as Cassian Eckerd. One of her friends said, So Heather didn't lie. The Duke is truly just a handsome man, but the gossip is a blatant lie. Cassian asked, Is that what his wife said about him? The girls asked the Duke when he and Heather were planning to celebrate their wedding. Heather replied that they had no plans yet. But you moved to the East a long time ago. What kind of grandiose event are you preparing that it took so long? One friend asked them. I think Heather will figure it out on her own. Besides, the Duke has his own obligations. Another friend told her. And she continued that without a wedding, they are not married at all. The couple said goodbye to their friends, and Heather said that they would see each other again at the reception. Going outside, Heather asked Cassian if he was really following her, and he replied that he simply didn't know anyone in the capital. Then the girl thought, oh, that's the thing. He could very well get bored, left at home alone. Heather apologized to her husband for leaving him alone at home. Then, she asked where they were going. The guy replied that he would like to take a walk around the city. Cassian invited Heather to choose a place for a walk, and the girl chose the park. Walking with her husband to the park, Heather thought that they were a beautiful couple. Heather knew that with marriage, not only her status would change, but also many other things. Upon her return to the capital, the changes are felt even more strongly. She gained a lot, but also lost a lot. Moreover, after meeting with her friends, there was only one question in her head. Why did his lordship decide not to hold the ceremony? Not only did he not perform the ceremony, but all Heather did was put a stamp on the paper Gilliam brought her. And no one ever told the reason for this. Why is a man who gave up a normal family life, why is he so gentle with me? Heather did not understand as Cassian gently held her hand. The girl thought she might ask him, but she decided that he would tell him himself when the time came, for now all we can do is wait. When the couple approached the house, the brother and father were already looking out for them. The brother noticed that Heather was not happy and asked if her husband had offended her, but Heather said it was okay. Then the brother asked when they planned to hold the wedding ceremony. This question was like a stone to the head for Heather. She never thought that she would have to listen to speeches about the ceremony once again. Well, I'm not quite sure yet, Heather managed to say. In terms of, how come you're not sure? Haven't you decided on your wedding day yet? Apparently I'll have to talk to the Duke. The brother was indignant. But the girl objected and added that there was no need for this. It's just their business with him. And most likely, there will be no wedding ceremony. The brother did not understand how this could be and the girl explained to him that she and the duke had discussed everything and calmed her brother down so that he would not worry. You yourself understand perfectly well how this will affect your reputation, and how can others take advantage of the situation, her brother told her and wished her good night. Heather was worried that now her brother would also be scratching his head over this. That's why she didn't want to discuss this issue. But you won't be able to hide everything forever. The girl entered her room and saw her half-naked husband putting on his shirt after a shower. Cassian greeted his wife. He noticed that Heather was blushing and asked what happened. She replied that everything was fine, and since he was bored alone today, tomorrow they would spend time together. Cassian smiled so much. When that gentle smile appears on his face, it feels like I'm special to him. What happened with me? I don't even know, thought Heather. That night, Heather couldn't sleep for a long time and she heard Cassian screaming in his sleep. Please, Heather. Heather, don't go. The girl tried to wake him up. When Cassian woke up, he hugged his wife tightly and did not let go for a long time. It looks like you had a nightmare. May I know what the dream was about? Heather asked. The Duke replied that these were just his memories. The girl was stunned. Memories? Where can I get there? She thought. I was surprised when you shouted my name, she said. Heather didn't like the idea of her coming to him in his nightmares. Of course, anything can happen in a dream. However, why does he look so scared? Heather told her husband that it was just a dream and that she would be there until he calmed down. Cassian thanked his wife. Finally, the day of the imperial reception arrived. Heather was trying on a dress. Jenna said that the dress has a lot of lace inserts, so it creates an airy effect. When his lordship entered the room, he looked at his wife and did not say a word. The girl was worried that she looked somehow strange since he was silent. But the duke said that she was simply beautiful, and all eyes would be focused only on her. Heather replied that she was cute, but not that cute. Do you know how many beauties there are in the capital? Heather asked, as if affirming. And yet I'm sure you will stand out among them, replied the Duke. Heather replied that it would not be bad, since she had been preparing for this reception all day. The girl said that all that remained was to choose the jewelry. 
How do you like this necklace? She asked her husband. Cassian replied that he liked it and it matched the outfit. It was the necklace he had given her as a proposal. They say that Duke Eckhart will appear at the reception this time. That must be why he makes more noise than usual. People around said about Raiden. It seems that our old man has dementia. Isn't it natural that the eldest son should inherit the title? Then I would have remained the son of a count and not a viscount, Raiden insisted. The people who gathered around fawning agreed with him. One man said, By the way, we are very sorry that Lady Argent married the duke. This stupid woman herself refused such a wonderful groom. He is a duke, but his lands are declining, right? He asked angrily. Besides, they say that he is an ugly monster. He killed the previous duke and clearly not everything is in order with his head. And Heather is not the first beauty in the capital, Raiden continued. Wow, who is this beauty? Asked the guy standing next to her. This is His Serene Highness Duke Eckert and his wife, answered someone nearby. Raiden couldn't believe his eyes. Heather knew that all eyes were on them, the feeling that she was being examined like an unknown animal. They passed by and got to know each other endlessly. The girl looked at the duke to make sure he was okay. He didn't seem to like it here, so the reception begins. The emperor decided that since the duke had arrived, it was time for him too, and stood in front of the guests. Thank you to everyone for gathering here today, he thanked everyone present. Duke Eckerd bowed his head before the emperor and said, Endless honor and prosperity to the Bernian Empire, which I pledge to defend. I, Cassian Eckerd, descendant of the first hero, greet your imperial majesty, the guy said. The emperor replied that this reception was in his honor, so they would like it. Heather did not like the emperor's gaze directed at her. He was like a snake hypnotizing its prey. Goosebumps ran down her spine and she felt uneasy. When the emperor left them, a girl ran up to Heather and said that she looked absolutely gorgeous today. Heather recognized her friend Elia. Heather left her husband, telling him to also make acquaintances with the capital's aristocrats, and the girl went away to chat with her friend. A friend told her that she was now at peace, and it was good that Heather married him, because it is clear that his lordship really likes her. During their conversation, Heather was approached by the wife of the crown prince of the Bernia Empire. The girl said, Greetings to the crown princess of the empire. My name is Heather Eckerd. The princess said that she had heard a lot about her and was very pleased to meet her. Then the princess asked her friend to introduce herself. Greetings, crown princess. I am Elia Melrose, the girl said. Melrose? What kind of genus is this? It seems no one has heard of him, the princess answered her. Duchess, would you like me to give you some useful advice? I don't know how it was before the wedding, but from now on you should make friends with those who correspond to your status. Otherwise you will simply disgrace Duke Eckhart and tarnish his reputation, said the princess. Is that so? Thanks for the advice. I'll definitely take it into account, Heather replied. But Heather, having said this to the princess, continued to chat with her friend. Then the princess reminded the girl that she had recently become a duchess, and she added that it's time to learn to understand people. Heather replied that she would try. Then the princess asked how the bad weather was in the east. Heather replied that the weather was much better than she thought. And lately, the weather is so wonderful that traders don't even open their shops, but enjoy the sun. And if you come to a tea party at a tea party in the east, you can watch how noble ladies fight, grabbing each other by the hair and slapping each other on the cheeks. Are you making fun of me? Are you implying that I know nothing about geography? So you are greatly exaggerating, the crown princess said irritably. Duchess Eckerd, you just missed your chance. Your behavior will come back to haunt you and you will regret it the princess said angrily and left. Why did you go so far for me? Elia asked. And Heather answered her, smiling. How can I pretend that I don't know you? Heather noticed a girl with long white hair on the balcony who had been watching them all this time. The girl wondered how Cassian was doing. At this time, a guy approached him. Red eyes, thick blonde hair, looks like an emperor. Cassian greeted the crown prince. The prince told the duke that they had not seen him for ten years. The prince admitted that as soon as the duke stopped appearing in the capital, strange rumors began to circulate about him. But I, of course, did not believe these rumors. I am different from my father, Duke Eckerd. You can look forward to me ascending the throne, said the prince. After the prince, a girl with bright red hair approached the duke and said, I beg your pardon, your grace. Why are you standing alone? We don't know each other, but I've heard a lot about you. I didn't think you were such a prominent man. It seems that not only do you have a magnificent face and body, but also a wonderful character. How can you call such a handsome man a monster? People are going completely overboard. They must just be jealous of you. 
she continued. Cassian did not know what to do with her, and looked for Heather with his eyes. Meanwhile, Heather noticed Cassian with a woman and she didn't like it at all. She was about to approach them when some guy approached her. He said that he had long wanted to meet her, but the opportunity came only now. Heather lost sight of her husband. She was very upset, thinking, did he really leave with that girl? But he called out to her, wife. Cassian asked if he had interrupted her conversation. Heather responded with relief that he was just in time. The duke noticed that something was bothering his wife. She asked who the girl he was talking to was. Heather thought they knew each other very well. Cassian replied that it was the first time he had seen her. The ball began and Cassian asked Heather to give him one dance. The girl thought, what can I do? I haven't danced with anyone for so long. As a child, Heather was given dance lessons, however. They all ended with her crushing her partner's legs. She decided to be honest with her husband. When Heather admitted that she couldn't dance, Cassian said that he couldn't dance either. And then he added, Just think, we don't know how, it's not scary. Then, Heather thought he was right. The status of a duchess does not imply being perfect in everything. Maybe she is too demanding of herself. They danced, and the girl had the feeling that this was not the first time this had happened. It was as if they had danced together many times before. Cassian leaned over Heather as if he wanted to kiss her. Then he released her and told her to rest, and he would bring her something to drink. My heart, stop trying to leave your body. Do I really feel something for him? Heather thought, left alone. So it turns out that Duchess Eckerd has not yet had a wedding. I thought they already held the ceremony in the East, but they got married in a hurry. Yesterday she was asked a question about the wedding, but she answered somewhat vaguely. Heather overheard one of her friends discussing it with the crown princess. Lord God, even a wedding cannot be held humanly, and he snaps at the princess, the crown princess answered the girl. Duchess, are you really not going to perform the ceremony? Just don't get me wrong. I was just thinking about how sad it would be without a ceremony, the princess said to Heather. Is it okay not to have a ceremony? There must be reasons for this, Duchess. The princess continued her attacks. The wedding will take place in the east in three months. We invite everyone. Be sure to come, Duke Eckert announced, approaching his wife. Her father and brother met Heather at home and asked how the reception went. They noticed that something had happened, and Heather told them that she was getting married. They were perplexed and asked to explain everything. Hours earlier, after Cassian made this announcement, he apologized to his wife for not warning her. Heather asked her husband if he really wanted to get married. He replied that if she didn't mind, then he would really like it. Before this, you insisted that it would not happen. May I ask why you suddenly changed your mind? Heather asked. Cassian replied that he didn't want her to be judged because of him. Then the girl asked if he would regret this decision. Cassian replied, no, never. Now Heather was sitting outside near the fountain near the house. She somehow explained everything to her father and brother, so everything should be in order. But she was interested in what the real reason for this change was. Until now, his lordship has insisted that there will be no wedding, and she even came to terms with it. She thought it was better to give up and accept the situation. Of course, they wash her bones a lot, but it's somehow too sudden. But even if she decided not to pay attention to it in the end, her gaze always falls on him. As Heather and Cassian sat in the living room at breakfast, they were informed that a guest had arrived from the palace. Heather wasn't expecting guests, so Cassian decided to go with her. A girl with long blonde hair was sitting in the room. She told Heather that she had arrived faster than she expected. It was the girl from the balcony. Heather introduced herself and greeted her highness. The girl said that she was pleased to meet you and her name was Sianna Bernia. Sianna asked his serene highness Duke Eckerd to leave them alone with his wife. The princess praised the tea which was grown and fermented in the east. May I ask the reason for your visit, princess? Heather said. Sianna replied that it was nothing. She just had a few questions for Heather. Duchess, why did you go against the crown princess? In the situation with Elia Melrose, you had the opportunity to resolve everything delicately. You could pretend to not know this girl. You are well aware of the influence of the crown princess. Princess Sianna began her conversation. Heather replied that, of course, she was aware of the influence of the crown princess but she had no need to become close to her in this way. Besides, Elia is her friend. Princess Sianna replied that she had expected a similar response. After all, Heather is not like everyone else. She admitted that she had been watching her all evening. Duchess, you are the only one who remained unharmed after a quarrel with the crown princess, said Princess Sianna. Then Heather decided to ask, Your Highness, did something happen between you and the heiress? Sianna replied that their relationship was never warm, but now it's just terrible. Every single person in this country thinks that I am the happiest, 
but they judge by a beautiful rapper. Princess Siana began her revelations. I had to erase my identity, live quietly, fawning over the emperor and empress. Even though the crown prince had everything, he still got what he wanted. Everyone went out of their way to please him, and so that he wouldn't get bored. And I lived with one thought, to marry the person I love. In this way, it seemed to me that I could get out of my cage. Therefore, I endured and waited. But one day, the crown princess appeared in the palace. She began to mock my maids. When I found out, I came to talk to her, but she didn't even blink an eye. She was even offended by my indignation. In addition, she ridiculed me for standing up for some kind of homeless ragamuffin. From that day on, the princess began to show hostility towards me. She even complained about me to my own father, who punished me with house arrest. Everyone turned their backs on me, even those I trusted. A month later, when I went out into the world, I discovered that the princess had taken my place. And now she runs everything. I didn't have a single opportunity to stand up for myself. I was forced to go to a recent appointment. That's when I saw you, Duchess. I felt that you were special. It seemed to me that I could open up to you, Siana admitted. Heather, after listening to her, asked if that was why she came unannounced and told everything. The princess asked if she should have told this to someone else. Siana admitted that she trusts her intuition. Duchess, please help me, the princess asked desperately. But Heather said she had to refuse. She asked the frightened princess to listen to her to the end. Heather, as a duchess, can't make any promises to her, but as a friend, she seems able to help. Raiden smashed the dishes and shouted, It should have been mine. How dare this monster take her away from me? Okay, wedding, you say. We'll see if it happens. As Heather escorted Princess Sienna to the carriage, Cassian asked what they were talking about. The girl replied that they decided to become friends, but she added that they will not see each other often, since it is quite far from the capital to the east, and she will not do business with her officially, only provide friendly support. Cassian said that he would like to discuss something with her regarding the wedding. He invited Heather to have a small celebration in the county before they returned to the east. After all, there are those who will not be able to reach them. They can have a family gathering with relatives and hold the ceremony itself in the east. Heather was worried that it would take a lot of time and money. Cassian said that she didn't have to worry about finances and it would only take three days to prepare. The night before the wedding, Heather had a dream in which there was a girl and a guy. Where are we going today? Are you allowed to go outside the house? The guy asked the girl. You came in secret. They will recognize you, said the girl. I'm tired of constantly hiding. Maybe we can tell them the truth, the guy suggested. It was the first time Heather had seen such a realistic dream. It was as if it was real. There was a feeling that this was not a dream at all. And if you think about it, she's already seen these children somewhere. When she woke up, everyone was preparing for the wedding. Well, Heather stood in a beautiful white dress. My father cried because she was so beautiful. To tell you the truth, until we sent you to the East, I didn't fully realize that you were getting married. And so, when the wedding day came, it finally dawned on me. My daughter is a married woman. Because of these thoughts, I didn't sleep all night, the father admitted, and began to tell Heather all sorts of stories from her childhood. Then he asked his daughter if his lordship was treating her well. She answered positively, and then the father blessed them. When the lovers stood near the altar, they did not say a word, but they could not take their eyes off each other. Heather could tell from the look in his eyes that Cassian was overwhelmed with emotion. So it's time to take your marital vows. The priest said, Lord Cassian Eckerd, do you swear to love and respect your fiancé Heather Argent for the rest of your days? Cassian answered yes. Lady Heather Argent, do you swear to love and respect your fiancé Cassian Eckerd for the rest of your days? Yes, Heather replied. You can exchange wedding rings. I pronounce you husband and wife. Seal your oath with a kiss, said the priest. And Cassian said, Heather, I love you, and kissed Heather as gently and firmly as he could. The girl melted in his arms. At that moment, Raiden burst into the hall and shouted for them to stop. He had a long sword in his hands and walked angrily towards them. Cassian covered Heather with himself. Heather, you shouldn't be here. Your place is next to me. Come here, Heather, we have to go, Raiden said, extending his hand to the girl.